Just uh, my I say I'm not doing vlogs anymore and then randomly do vlogs. Yeah. Sometimes I just really want to vlog. I do enjoy vlogging, it's just other videos I wanted to do and yeah. So welcome to the last three days of uh the magical read readathon Aurelium Autumn Equinox. I still have four books to read <laughs> and I am positive I can get through three of them. I'm not sure about the fourth one. If, if, if I should have an epiphany again where I can think of another book that's short that will fulfill the prompt that I really need, <laughs> then that would be awesome. Come on, brain. But anyway, starting this vlog, literally the same day I had ended the last one and uh, that's Monday August 29th. I, I really do need to do some kind of work and I'm gonna do that while listening to excuse me Grave Peril by Jim Butcher. Uh, that is my D pick for Conjuration, Raise the Dead, Theory, Reread a Favorite. I'm listening to the audiobook and we're at a good part. So Grave Peril is book three in the Dresden Files, which I'm rereading because it's been so long. Um, book, I think, 15, 16 and 17 came out last year. Uh, I still haven't gotten to them because, I, like I said, there was a big chunk of time where Jim Butcher wasn't uh, publishing for the series, uh, several years. So I am up to date as of reading, but I don't remember a lot. And these, especially 16, was apparently very important. Dresden Files series, we're following Harry Dresden, who is a wizard uh, working in uh, modern day Chicago. So this is an urban fantasy series. Harry is a kind of private eye type. Uh, so there's a little bit of a noir aspect to it, which is interesting. It's a uh, urban fantasy, so there are various paranormal elements to this. Uh, we follow her as he goes about solving these cases um, that are not always clients but they're uh, magical or mystical or paranormal in uh, format. This is not like a mystery or who done it type of uh, thing. This is not uh, like a police procedural type. It is very much uh, fantasy. It's just set in an urban modern times. And with Grave Peril things, this is this is the book where a lot of people have said the series really gets going and I agree now that I've been listening to it again. A lot of major characters that uh, are very interesting and very important to the series show up in this book and I've been loving seeing them um, and particularly the bad guys so I I don't know how to describe this particular book but um, Harry is very really, really poor and his magic affects like um, electricity and stuff so he lives in a basement apartment with like no electricity he has to use a literal ice box with ice not a refrigerator that kind of thing um and the magic that he does as a wizard is uh ceremonial magical type for those who know anything about paganism and various types of magic systems and witchcraft whatnot. His is, is more ceremonial magic, hence he is a wizard, and um, there is a wizard's council, which we haven't really met yet, but 
later in the series. There are vampires, werewolves, other uh, magic users, the fae, um, regular people. Uh, I wouldn't say angels, but something adjacent. So, very interesting. In this particular book, um, Harry is, you know, trying to make enough money from his clients, uh, his few cases, and uh, date his girlfriend in the regular life. There is a lot of uh, specifically ghost activity, very violent ghost activity happening around the city a lot. Um, he's trying to help the police with those particular cases when he can, and uh, he has a special friend with him and I don't mean that in like a sexual romantic type of way um the special is something that you gotta read but um a young girl approaches him very terrified looking for uh magical protection and he offers a little bit but then she winds up going missing and other things keep happening uh so yeah i'm enjoying it i'm most of the way through it i got uh, about three hours i think and this morning as i was procrastinating my life away yeah i got a little over three hours three hours 15, 16 minutes um ashley from bookish realm started reading sprints so like that's got me going. I took my shower and I listened while I was getting ready. And I will continue while I set up my bullet journal for the next month. I should have done that over the weekend, but that's neither here nor there. Um, the other book I will start today will be finally Crow Bones by Ann Bishop. I expect to fly through this like I do with every other book in this series. This is book three in the world of the others. Also, kind of an offshoot of the others so one two three four five so book eight in the others i guess they're in the same universe i don't know how to describe it but um the others the world of the others is this kind of alternate earth urban fantasy and if you're sensing a trend there's that's so there's a reason why I do love urban fantasy uh, and where instead of humans being the most prolific uh, living beings on the planet the others are um, humans have not spread all over the earth as widely as they have in the real world um, they are corralled into small places um, on the continent while the others who are hmm, more natural beings take over the majority of the rest of the continent so let's say like north america or um there's like some human areas on the both edges of the uh east and west coast roughly where la is and then uh, New York and New England for the most part. Uh, human settlements, but they some of them do grow big enough to be cities. But um, the others have these created these things uh, called courtyards for those who are interested in learning more about humans and, and uh, just interacting with humans. And so they're just these little like I guess settlements within the settlements. I don't know how to describe them. They look like campgrounds, I guess. Um, this is a section of houses, a little outdoor area on the edge of like forests and stuff. So the others, what are they? They're basically like supernatural beings. So they're the ones that really interact with humans are like vampires, um, where animals, I guess, or shifters is more appropriate. Um, and some other things that are, in my opinion, very unique to this series, though they do show up in uh, real world mythology. Uh, 
but there are also more elemental beings and then stuff that the human mind can't really process or the human senses can't really process and they the more like that they are the more powerful they are um and those those others don't really leave the natural areas of the world unless they feel like humans are getting uppity. So that happens in these books, and I will say that happens way too often. Crowbones book three, I'm assuming, is about the crow guard or the shifters that turn into crows or crows that turn into people. Sorry about any ambient noise. It's summertime, y'all. There is... Uh, Vicky Divine running a rustic resort. The jumble. Someone arrives dressed as crow bolts. The crow guard bogeyman, and the imposter is killed by shape shifting crow. And the deaths are con the the deaths are connected. Everyone feels fears the real crow bones is going to pop up, um, and eventually the the others cut off the humans in that area from the rest of the world uh, to help them figure out what's going on basically but yeah i flew through the previous two books of this and yes, i don't remember what i was saying but i was talking about this and how i'll fly through it in a day i think um or in 24 hours i should say then after that i will pick up um shadow and death and which is my old pick for um spells and incantations uh watchman was the cue that i was supposed to do but uh i showed you i think in my last video but of how I did the color wheel because oh a spell recolor use a color wheel pick a book matching that color I got the lime green and then when I did it again I got yellow and the shadows and death house both on the cover so yay um that is a I don't even th that's that's a Book 55 in a series by J.D. Robb, which is a pseudonym for Nora Roberts. Um, yes, I am a fan, it's particularly of the In-Depth series. This is uh, following Eve and Wark, mostly Eve, but um, Wark is well-loved. Um, it's set in the future. Eve Dallas is a New York City police officer. I think it's NYPS. D is what it's called. It's like it I think the series starts in like 2039 but now it's in 2050 or something like that. Um so futuristic but still New York City and um that's part of why I love it. The the setting is still very New York but different. Um and that works. Uh and she's she's got a traumatic past she wound up being an orphan after having an abusive father or whatever and then Rourke is her now husband though that's not how he starts out in the series he is um he was also an orphan in ireland and he grew up a thief and eventually became a multi-billionaire uh and so they're coming from different walks of life but they have stuff in common but the focus of this series for the most part is on eve's cases which i find fascinating um so she's a police she's not a cap it's lieutenant lieutenant dallas uh so she has a whole you know squad of people under her and her partner and all of that stuff and i just like keeping up with them um and then also seeing the new cases uh see how the various relationships evolve so that is that um the only other thing i will try this is all i'm gonna try to read by wednesday midnight by the way mind you i got some work to do wednesday i definitely at 8 p.m 
Um, we have our coven uh, Zoom meeting about from the Cauldron Born, the first two parts, as I mentioned, and I'll finish that in that time. Um, I do need to edit and upload something. I, do, I need to do something. Uh, I need to film, which I'm probably going to do today, my setup for my bullet journal. And uh, I need to schedule and uh, create and schedule some social media posts and I need to update my Etsy shop and with fall products um, and I need to I don't know I don't know what else but then on Thursday September starts September 1st and therefore Bookopolithon starts and I already got my first two books picked out I know on Tuesday I probably will go to the park to do some stewardship for a couple of hours like I often do they do it on Tuesdays and Saturdays um, I just think Tuesday is a better day for me personally I don't think I have anything else have to do on a certain time or a certain day this week so wish me luck this is a really long intro for no reason let me go start working on my setup and finish listening to dress and files maybe you'll get vlogs for a book on with on too at least this beginning so quick update on crow bones i basically spent the morning reading this and i do have i do have clothes on to top. Um, I'm basically halfway through this. It, it goes quickly and I'm like into it. Uh, I'm up to page 188. Yeah. So starting chapter 49, there's less than 400 pages in the, in the book. 300 and something. Yes, that below 340. 345 pages. So, I do need to do some kind of work today. I'm gonna go to the library to pick up the book one, my first roll for a book apple thought, which starts in two days. I probably won't start Shadow and Death until tomorrow, which is fine. Um, that is also 300 and something pages, and I anticipate being a quick read. However, um, I need to fit in my fantasy read, and this is what this is why I don't record at this time of the day. Uh, for me to get my calling, I really, really need to get that Oa in necromancy, um, which is Gideon the Ninth. Now, I've been thinking about this for like a week or so now. I didn't start reading on August until the 4th, August 4th, and I did not, I mean, I didn't read that much then. Um, I didn't really start reading, reading again until the 15th, but I'm not going to do that to myself. But I could put down that I finished my calling if we go from August 4th to September 4th which would be Sunday of this week but do I want to start my Bogopolithon then or start it on Thursday September 1st I should start it on whenever I finish the last book um, of this so that the overlap, like I'm not distracting myself from Gideon the Ninth. I have the ebook, so, and it's fairly short. It should not take me until Sunday. So we'll see. I can count the pages. <laughs> I don't know, guys. I don't know. Um, I just never start reading thons on time. Never. And why should that end here? Is G going to come and arrest me? No. So, I don't know what I'm going to do. But yeah.
Let me stop rambling. I came to tell you that a few minutes ago, just before midnight, I finished Crowbone. So that's my uh, cue for necromancy, I believe. Um, I turned off my phone so I don't remember. That's done and I read it in a day. Did I do anything else today? No. <laughs> that's okay, I'm still awake, but I'm debating if I should go to sleep now. Because uh, I now have uh, the the Zoom meeting I'm supposed to have tomorrow night has now been moved to Friday, which is fine. But I need to do some moving of things tomorrow, which is a pain in the butt. An audiobook would be very helpful right now. I'm just saying. Just saying. But anyway. Uh, or... Since I'm still wide awake, should I dive into the next book, which could either be uh, Shadow and Death, which I already talked about, or The Haunting of Tramcar 015. Both are ebooks, so I could definitely stumble in bed with the lights off and read on my phone or tablet. So, maybe I'm not awake as I thought, but things are going roughly as planned. Clearly tomorrow I will not have all the hours in the day to just read like I did today, but wish me luck. It is September 1st. Um. So officially, the Magical Readathon is over. I did not finish uh, Shadows and Death yesterday. Just too busy um, cleaning one area uh, around my desk and moving furniture because uh, we're getting new some new, some new living room furniture. Uh, the day is already half over. I'm enjoying it though. So I'm gonna keep going. I put in that I finished it and then I finished uh, my fantasy and that I did not finish my um, O Ordinary and uh, the Necromancy one, which was Gideon the Ninth. Because I am gonna go until the 4th, which is Sunday, with this. Um, but back to Shadows and Death, I, like I said, I am enjoying it, which, I uh, no surprise. I was thinking about it, and it's just, this is, it's not book 55, by the way, it's book 51. There are 55 books, but I haven't read since 50, I think. Um, but anyway, the, this particular story, um, what happens is a woman is, uh, murdered outside a park and uh, Eve gets the call. She's the closest uh, ranking police officer. She happens to be out with her husband Rourke at the time so he's on the scene as well and um, come to find out it was a contract kill and the pro, the professional killer um, shows himself to work because they have a connection from their childhood and uh, Yeah, it seems like this guy thinks of work as kind of a rival or he did and he never Seemed to have gotten over it. I don't know, right? Um, so work work has a criminal history past, but we also found out that this guy has now has a connection with the um, chief of police and when he was probably a lieutenant um, but when he was in organized crime and when Eve's mentor who now runs the E division the digital police officers division and fingers crossed we do get something like that someday because the police now just 
are way behind when it comes to internet crimes like so anyway um that's one of the things i really like about this series like the police can go right but if we do have some kind of uh, peacekeeping crime fighting organized organization there should be an e division but anyway um the so there's 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 probably going to be some Ireland bits in this and I'm looking forward to how this is going uh this is not you know JD Rob aka Nora Roberts reinventing the wheel it is kind of more of the same but it's nice to be back with Eve and Rourke and the gang um so yes now today is September 1st so that means day one of the Gopalathon and also I plan on participating in the Renaissance Readathon um and this is mostly on Twitter, so hashtag Renaissance Readathon. There is no announcement video for me to link to, but I will link to the uh, Twitter announcement. There are 16 prompts. This is based on Beyonce's Renaissance album, which recently came out, which I enjoy. I need to, I don't think I finished listening to it, but. I liked most of what I heard, so will the whole album be on repeat for me constantly? Probably not, um, but some songs maybe. So yeah, each prompt, there are 16 prompts, goes with one of the songs, and this is like a black author, at least, um, focused readathon, so I got some books that I want to read. There is a group read, The Black Flamingo, which I have not gotten to yet, so I will try to get that. And um, there, one of the prompts is to pick from the uh, the creator's faves, and I I'm so sorry, I don't remember the names of the two people who created the readathon. I'll put them on the screen here. Thank you very much, but um. There's at least one book from one of their lists that I really, really want to read uh, with the fire on high. It's been too long, too long since I've read one of um, that author's books and I need to get on it. I also want to read Harbor, the last book in this trilogy by uh, Rebecca Weatherspoon. Um, maybe some Tochi on Yabuchi to get a uh, fantasy in there but uh yeah like there's plenty of black authors I'll get to I also would like irrespective of either of these readathons to read some more Latinx authors and I mean with the fire on high that will get me started Latin American our Hispanic Heritage Month is from September 15th to October 15th and um, I want to read for that. It's not to say that that's the only time I'll read Latinx books, but it's it's a good reminder seeing, you know, once it's uh, reminding me that I had things that I wanted to read and I'm really in moments back to the renaissance readathon the other one that's uh, definitely black love I want to get to is sweet hand I'm going to read that since last year so yeah the other thing is libraries so I forgot one of the things I wanted to do this year and going forward is visiting various library locations so instead of putting books on hold and having them you know basically be put in transit to my local library i'm planning on going to pick them up so i've shown my local library in a, in in my videos before but that my first book for bookopolathon will 
be me picking out for my local. And the others, throughout this month, hopefully, if it works out, if it's not digital, I will be going to a different library spot to pick them up where they're currently available. And I guess showing you the library. I don't know if you care, but that'll happen off and on throughout the rest of the month. And lastly, for what did not happen yesterday was I did not have the uh, Coven Book Club meeting last night. We had switched it to Friday and then we were trying to switch it back to last night, but it didn't work out. So that'll be Friday. And then the live show for uh, the Realm of Comics, uh, for Watchmen and V for Vendetta did not happen, so I don't know when that's happening. They said Wednesday, but I hope everything's okay. So some point this week, those will happen. Otherwise, it's just work and probably going to do some gardening on Saturday and the fourth will be a out of court ritual in the evening which you will not see <laughs> but yeah that's that's how my reading's going those are my reading and life related plans this week Hey guys, uh, it is Friday. I wanted to give you a quick reading update. I've only got 100 pages left of Shadows and Death, so I will probably finish that tonight. I went to the Botanical Gardens earlier today, and um, it was a pretty chill time, so I did read a lot there. Uh, we're, we're closing in. We're closing in on the bad guy this one is more focused on Eve and her thoughts and her processes of figuring out um, where this guy is what's his next move gonna be sometimes in some books we get uh, some more omniscient looks at uh, the bad guys and how they put stuff together. We don't know who is who yet, but we see them committing the crimes or discussing how they were gonna keep ahead of the police and other uh, law enforcement. And some other books, uh, we focus more emotionally on Eve and work um, sometimes um, especially if there's that Ireland connection or that connection to Rourke's past we focus a little bit more on him but this is really Eve and the work um, which makes it fairly simple to follow I was thinking about like this series and why I like it so much still and it's really like I've grown so comfortable with Eve and Rourke and their family their found family that it's like 
visiting and catching up. Like, hey, what was your latest case about? And how's this one doing? And how's that one doing? How's the cat? You know? Yesterday, yeah, yesterday, yes. Yesterday I went to the library and I believe I showed you guys of me browsing even though I just needed to pick up a book. So that was my local place. I did not show you a lot of it because I've shown you it before. It's not a huge place, but um, thinking about Renaissance Readathon, I was like, let me pick up some books. And now since I Brie from, are you gonna yell some more kid? Now since Brie from Lock Boutician has announced like Black Aweenathon and I'm gonna participate this year, I was thinking, oh man, maybe these would fit for those. But that, like, there is no end to what books by Black authors I can read. So I found this, The Black Mage. Um, and this is by Daniel Barnes and DJ Kirkland. DJ Kirkland being the artist, Daniel Barnes being the writer. This is, I think, kind of anime style. And it's a magic university in need of some diversity. I did stand there and look up both the artist and the writer to make sure they were black. Um, and I think that tagline here on the back pretty much put it it's it's saint ivory academy set in america an elite visiting school um and they want to take first crucial steps towards breaking the social divide between white mages and their separate but equal black mage counterparts and they are dedicated to making a more diverse and inclusive wizarding community through their magical minority initiative. I, an affirmative action scholarship that will open the St. Ivory's doors to its first ever black student. The lucky recipient is Tom Token. And I am amused, but also like, I don't know how this will go. So, that's something. Also, I found this, just randomly pulled it out, and there's black people on the cover. Infinitum. Infinitum. An Afro-Futurist tale by Tim Fielder. And so this is sci-fi. Uh, King Aja Oba and Queen Lu are revered across Africa for their political and military skills. The king kidnaps his son, Born to the concubine, Obinrin, she curses Oba with the gift of immortality. Uh, both Queen Lewa and the Crown Prince die naturally in the age of King Oba, is heartbroken and alone. Beautifully rendered, emotionally evocative, Infinitum presents a unique cosmic experience addressing issues of racism, homophobia, gender inequality and the encroachment of technology and the spiritual cost of war while exposing the history behind ancient mysteries. First of all, this cover is gorgeous. I've never read like a horizontal uh, comic or graphic novel. This artwork is stunning. Like I just randomly pulled this out. So I don't even know what to call this. I'm just impressed. Like, wow. So, definitely reading that. And the last book I picked up, I gotta take my paper off, is row number one. It won. I put a poll up on Twitter, on Instagram. Not that anyone on Instagram really voted, <laughs> but Instagram came up 50 50. Uh, one with this book and the sun emoji and on Twitter this one came up as number one the little ghost which I put in for the title soul taken this is the latest release from Patricia Briggs in the Mercy Thompson series of which I am a huge fan this is one of my 2022 anticipated releases and so this will be my first book for Bookopolathon. I still have out, I realized, Witchy by Ariel Slamet Reese. And I have House of Slaughter, The Butcher's Mark. Um, 
by James Tinian the fourth. So I'm gonna read these at some point. Let me see. No, James Tinian is these are all white men. So well, uh, yeah, some are Hispanic, but Hispanic Heritage Month maybe. I don't know about Ariel, but oh, this is Oni Press as well. So. Same press as the Black Mage. Still have those out. I have my live sh uh, Zoom chat about this book, Cauldron Born. I may or may not have a separate video about this. I've been thinking about that for a while. I did start uh, with, what did I call it? Magical... The Magical Library. Some videos. And I have a website for it where I talk about pagan books and I have other people who give who gave reviews way back when but that hasn't continued I want to say hmm, maybe I'll talk about this one get that back going the chats about pagan books because I have started reading more or pagan adjacent but um yeah in a little more than an hour our zoom discussion will begin and then after that i will finish shadows and death and start the haunting of tram car 015 which since i'm reading it this month can count for the renaissance beat as well Ooh. Ooh. I wanted to give an update. The whole squad is in fucking Ireland. It's ridiculous. I, that's probably like a spoiler, but how many people on booktube actually read this series? I don't know. I just, I'm highly amused by this development. Um, and Dallas is definitely perturbed. Uh, I've got 30 pages left. I had planned to go to sleep by now because tomorrow I will be getting up early to do things, but we're in the thick of it. We're in the action now, and, um, 30 pages instead of trying to read them tomorrow and then delaying my leave seems... Like, not a great idea. Just me. So, let's get it. Y'all, street foolishness is about to occur. Ridiculousness. Like, I get it, but also, this is ridiculous. I love it. I love it, though. I'm laying here. We almost done. I was like, how is this going to end? And it's, 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 it's cute and amusing to have the, like, found family and this blood family kind of come together and take this guy down. But now, <laughs> complete tomfoolery. Just no sense. I cannot believe. I cannot believe E is is supporting this. Not only supporting this, but like championing it. Like she put the idea forth. Obviously, Rourke is like hell yeah. 
And Brian's like, hell yeah. All, all the Irish is up. That's all I'm going to say. I look weird in this. I'm just using the lighting from the screen. But oh my goodness. Ridiculous. I am highly amused. Guys, please don't mind the uh, background music. Someone's outside. But I uh, just wanted to give you an update before I went out for the day. I last night at around 2 a.m. ish, maybe 2 30. I finished uh, Shadows and Death by JD Rob. Um, the ending was entertaining as hell. Um, I wish I could tell you more. I, I feel like this often, like, I want to just talk about the books, but it's booktube is one steady rule, there's no spoilers. But anyway, I, um, what is it, what was I going to say? I got to the epilogue and I was like, yeah, I'll fly through this. And 45 minutes later, because I could fall asleep, <laughs> but I did finish it. Like, not a lot happens in that epilogue. Uh, more of the normal expected things happened. Um, that last chapter, though, was wild. I... Ridiculousness. Straight crazy. But um, I also found out this morning that my hold for Gideon the Night, the audiobook, has been waiting for me. Also, another audiobook for a nonfiction book that I wanted is now delayed because I didn't answer. I didn't get any notifications about these audiobooks being available so I'm a little irritated because I could have been listening to Gideon and the Ninth and we'd be done already. But anyway today I'm going to head out now to Concrete Plant Park um, do some stewardship whatever gardening is planned for today. Also today is the Monarch Butterfly Celebration there will be paddling on the Bronx River um, and all kinds of arts and crafts and uh, monarch butterflies are known around this time of year uh, to start migrating and yeah we've got some we want to let migrate and that goes into the afternoon so I'll be out most of the day but thankfully I saw um, I checked my overdrive account and i can listen to the audiobook of um getting in the ninth while i'm out there i'm going to and coming back from that experience uh i'll tell you what that book is about later because i'm literally already late to be there so Let's go. Maybe I'll insert some clips of me out and about because I do take videos. I usually just post them on my Instagram though. So. hours after I came back I kind of sort of took a nap because I only got like five hours of sleep five and a half hours of sleep please excuse any background noises it's still summertime um I listened to about two hours a little over two hours of the uh, Gideon the Ninth and not loving it, not loving it. I, it's, 
I know this was why a hyped book. Um, a booktuber who is no longer active and I really liked talk about this book as soon as it came out and I know from following them on Twitter that they still like the series. Um, I remember the tagline lesbian necromancers in space um, and you know that's why I picked this book for my own necromancy uh, but like I was confused for the beginning first of all the audiobook um starts out with what i think is a, a character index which is weird like why 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 are we including that in the beginning of the audiobook um or maybe not a character index but a breakdown of each of the houses and the positions in them so i picked this book Partially because I own a digital copy of it. I got for free from Tor. Um, I'm trying to pull that up now. Gideon and Harrow are both annoying as fuck. No. I'm getting the feeling that that is going to be the female of female woman of woman relationship at some point um we're we're in Gideon's point of view it's Gideon the ninth so yeah I'm not sure I fully understand the purpose of everything but yeah like we start off and she's trying to escape and gets caught and still almost gets through until Harold shows up and kind of tricks her. That whole situation was confusing as hell until they actually fight. I'm um, doing that for a reason. If you know, you know. If you don't, then you know. It doesn't matter. But um, then after that, it's a little bit confusing and now I feel like they're they're about to leave the ninth. I don't know. I think their planet. I guess if they're on a whole planet, if the is it the ninth house? I want to say the ninth house, but I'm thinking of the 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 book title, um, and that's not helpful at all. Uh, what can I say? Just. The way they were going at each other was so very juvenile, and I'm so sorry about the audio. My mom is listening to a movie or a TV show extremely loud, and now they're arguing the people on the show. But anyway, the, their back and forth was just annoying to me. I was like, girls, y'all are stupid and petty. Getting inside of it, I understand, though like why not be petty and juvenile because that's all you get yeah, but that don't mean I want to be subjected to it for real for real I could have definitely listened to more but I was just annoyed by them I'm going to start reading the Haunting of Tram Car 015 because I know I'm gonna like that like the previous two and up until the Master of Jin the full novel by P. Jelly Clark the first full novel in the Dead Universe series of which all of these books are part of um that was the most popular of the series so and considering I love the first short uh, novella in the first short story I'm expecting to like this novella a lot too and it's less than 200 pages so let's get it I can still finish Gideon the Ninth. I got chores that need to be done over this weekend but I do need to study my outer court ritual as we're having outer court on Sunday tomorrow night so yeah 
Wish me luck. All I've been doing since I woke up is looking at books for the Renaissance Readathon and trying to figure out the bingo board. I'm not good with bingo boards. With readathons, I usually just ignore the bingo boards and go for the overarching theme of that readathon and then maybe if at the end I might, if I find the time and care enough, try to fit what I've read into bingo spot. I never aim to get bingo. <laughs> I'm also looking at my potential books for Black Alina Thons since I've now watched that video. So yeah. somebody else today also did my do I have that card uh, tag challenge uh, and I'll put a link in the description to their video even though it'll have been out a week or so by the time you see this but yeah. Go watch that if you haven't seen it. I'll put a link to that as well. I'm related to all of this. It's not bookish. It's bookish adjacent. It's but it's about tarot and oracle cards. So if you find that interesting, go check out the video linked. Alright. Let's read it.